There we are. It looks like um, we're live. So welcome everyone who's uh, logging in to join us at the moment across our social media platforms. Um, joined, as you can see, by our chief exec, Richard Holland, and we've been having a few technical issues. So um, I have Dai Young uh, sat next Evening. to me, but uh, rest assured, we're in the same bubble. We're tested, what is it now, three, three, three times, times a, a week. week? Three times a week, yeah. Uh, both jabbed up, so um, all good, hopefully. But um, yeah, thanks for joining us. And um, well, you know, we've had a lot of questions submitted um, previously, but you know, we'll take a few more on the evening as they come in. But just to kick us off, um, hi, um, welcome back. Your first kind of event with supporters. Um, just want to talk to us a little bit about your, you know, wh why you've come back here, what this place means to you, and um, you know, your hopes here for the future. I think, firstly, I think we're all looking forward to to having these um, these events in person. I think. Um, this is obviously better than nothing, but you know it's it's hard to replace that that interaction you'd have, um, you know, with obviously people in the audience and so on. But um, you know, come, people say it's never good to go back, but um, you know, uh, th this place owes so much dear to me. Um, I feel that I owe the place quite a bit as well. Been been here for sixteen years, I think, when I left uh, last time from from a, a player and as a coach. Um, gone away, feel that I've uh, learned a lot, some good experiences, some bad experiences, um, and feel that I'm coming back a uh, better coach, pretty much. So, really looking forward to you know to getting my um, you know teeth really into the job. I've had a couple of months now to you know to to weigh up a lot of things that's going on there, uh, going on here. It's it's very much things are similar but completely different as well. I know that sounds a contradiction, but Obviously, is not too many people here that I was here when I was here last time, so that makes it different. But you know, the the same values and and the same expectancy are around the place pretty much. So, really thrilled to be back, and you know, really looking forward to hopefully um, being a part of moving this um, this club forward. Yeah, you talked about um, the differences a little bit there, but just in terms of uh, the landscape in Wales, perhaps, and you know, the challenges. That uh, are there at the moment. You know, how different a kind of uh, job is it today compared to what it was? You know, was it 11, 12 years ago? Well, I think it's you know, there's a lot of similarities, but uh, you know, um, I think the union are, are far more uh, involved now than they were when it was um, your last time. Um, there is regular discussions going on about how things have moved forward, and, and hopefully that's going to be um, you know positive. Uh, discussions and positive actions really for all regions but um it, it, you know the the regions uh have you know changed quite a bit i think the, there's far more emphasis on uh welsh uh, homegrown talent and there's far more sort of um local boys playing there's far less overseas players um involved so you know there is definitely a little bit of a change in in culture and uh and, and things are a little bit different to when I left, probably. Great stuff. And Richards, like I, I said at the top end, um, great to have you with us this evening. So thank you for joining us. Um, you know, as you probably expect, there's been a lot of questions that have come in for you around finance. But, but before we get to that, um, there's also quite a few people asking, you know, what, what's the latest on getting crowds back to Cardiff Arms Park or at state, you know, generally in stage or across Wales? What, what's the latest you could share with us at the moment or you know what, what's the latest we're kind of uh, planning for yeah it's obviously a big uh we, we i guess it's uh we were asking not to start by uh, welcoming everybody and uh a good evening to uh to everyone joining us um i echo uh Dai's sentiments really it'd be uh great to get everybody uh back in in persons but this is a uh, next best thing so hopefully you're all, plenty of people tuned in um but just picking up your question mate it's a it's a million dollar question at the uh, at the minute and uh, there's lots of work going on with not just um you know, the rugby partners but you know football cricket and and, and all, on all sorts of sports uh, and and the welsh government to to try and look at how we can introduce crowds back into a uh, in, into the stadium and the, and, and the grounds um that they're going to be some test events not uh, not at arms park but uh, uh some other venues um and they're going to be monitored closely um i think every probably people who follow football would have seen that there are some crowds down in the um 
uh, I think it was at Wembley for the for, for the final down there, um, and they're going to be monitored and looked at, and 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 if all being well, um, we'd like to think that uh, to, to, that will be part of uh, um, part of that process. So it's um, it is going to be it's going to be slow and drawn out. The Arms Park is open for uh, uh, the clubhouse outside. You know that will take another uh, step forward in. Facility opening in the in a couple of weeks time, um, and um, like I say, it's uh, there's there's a huge amount of work going on and has been for some time now, um, but as the as the statistics um, fall in our favour and uh, and improve, we'll uh, we'll 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 hopefully be getting people back into the grounds. We've got a plan to put in place, Mike, that uh, as, as you well know yourself, that is going to uh, that we'll be able to roll out. And, and uh, we, we're very much looking forward to it. And I know Di and the players are too. Yeah, and just to follow on from that also, we're um, in the final stages now of putting together the you know, the, um, the season membership package. So um, we'll be communicating that with um, supporters probably in the next, uh, within the next two weeks that'll be going out. So um, yeah, it'd be great to get people back. Just looking at the live, I would say questions, I mean, comments. Do you know, um, Paul? Chachi Williams, Di? Yeah. Seeing you know Owen Tempe from Youth Club Subs. <laughs> <laughs> he owes me a lot more than Tempe, uh, that's for yeah. sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, yeah, he, he was just trolling us, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. A question probably, you can probably kick us off on Di and then maybe mm. throw back to um, Richard, because obviously you know, he was part of the planning mm. for this initially. But... Um, What's the plan for the RFC next season um, in terms of um, that kind of realignment with ourselves and using it as a kind of development team or, you know, the rags as it used to be? And, um, you know, is there any further potential for maybe a Celtic Cup or, you know, Anglo Valsh League or whatever it might be? I think um, the Celtic Cup tournament is, you know, is still in the discussion processes, really. So, um, you know, obviously that will be discussed, you know, when. We have confirmation whether that's taking place or not. I think, but from where we are, obviously, we have got to um, put plans in place um, to 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 keep on moving forward. We see uh, Cardiff RFC as as a real development tool for ourselves. Um, it'd be a vehicle for uh, all those senior transition players to play. They've missed out on a lot of rugby this season, but. Uh, you know, everybody has. So our senior transition group would play in that. Our best academy players, you know, will will play in that. Um, obviously, we'll have to supplement that as well by some season uh, pros players that are not going to uh, block the development of our academy players, but are going to help that development of players. You know, good role models and so on, and and players that can strengthen that team. So obviously, we always play. Any, any game we play, we want to win without the shadow of a doubt, but certainly the, the major emphasis on that team next year will be about development, about um, players playing uh, on, on a weekly basis, uh, which will help their development, and then obviously pushing them through to um, you know to Cardiff, um, Blues as it is now, but then Cardiff and it will be then. Yeah. Anything you'd want to add on that, Tiki? No, I think I summarised it quite well. I mean, uh, from from my perspective, I'm you know just disappointed we haven't had a season to uh, you know because obviously the board made this decision uh, a while back now, um, and we should have a season uh, a, a sort of a part of under our belts to to see how it's uh, uh, how it would have played out. But you know, we we made a clear decision, and um, you know we're uh, we're we're looking forward to 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 to, to implementing it and. Yeah, nothing to add really on the rugby side. It's uh, um, it's, it's going to be an important tool for uh, for the development, and it's uh, we, we, but one thing's for sure, and I think it's important to to say is that yeah, we also want to make sure that um, yeah, the 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 the, 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 the RFC is competitive as well. So it's that sort of supplementary group that Di referred to. Um, that's going to be a, sort of important. The sort of semi-pro guys. That'll uh, that'll complement the academy and the um and, and and the senior fellas to 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 make the team competitive. Because it's going to be in no one's benefit for them uh, not to be. So it's uh um in terms of I see a question coming in in, in, in with regards to Steve Law. 
um, yeah, we, we very much hope so, and um, he, he's part of our plans. And it's uh, it, it's it, he's a he's done a, a great job, and is uh, we we want him to be part of it moving forward. But clearly, given the sort of the, the change of where it sits in the organisation, um, he's he, he's going to uh, hopefully want to do that as well. But um, it's uh, it, we we, uh, we we as an organisation want to want him involved. And just in terms of um the kind of uh, brand evolution in general. Um, how, how pleased have you been with the reaction to that? This is obviously the first event of this nature we've kind of hosted since that announcement, but uh, been a really positive reaction. Yeah, it has, and uh, you know, it was a it wasn't a knee jerk decision. We we spent a lot of time uh, you know, looking at it and, and 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 talking about it as a board and, and and involving many different stakeholders and parties and experts in in in, in this arena. Um, but but the, the main part is is listening to the supporters and all the guys that are and, and girls that are listening uh, in this evening um, w would have been part of that. And and the data we received was was significant in in terms of uh you know wanting to wanting to do this and i know that there's um that there'll, there'll be some supporters that will be reticent but we hope to be able to um as i said at the time you know, keep them engaged um we you know we're committed to continuing the progression of the company and the uh at the end of the day we've we've dropped a suffix blues and and we're proud of the heritage not just for when the when the organization was cardiff rfc but uh during the cardiff blues days as well and you know die has die's been part of both and um, i'm sure as proud as proud as both and will be equally as proud to, to to be part of cardiff rugby and it's um the um the, the supporters all uh you know have, have have given us their the information we've we've acted upon it we've got some yeah, it's some exciting um announcements in due course with regards to you know the kit to, to support that um i know there's a that there's a that there's a group that uh that, that might have uh, liked to to retain the 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 old RFC badge, um, or, or when I say retain it, uh, have that as the the, the original badge. But uh, there were some challenges that we had in terms of the um, the, the the copywriting uh, on that. Um, but also as a board, we felt it was uh, the right thing to, to to not dismiss the the, the card of Blues era, um, but to modernise it and to to evolve it. So, so yeah, we're um we're excited about it, and and it's uh it's good to give the supporters and and the, the vast majority of our um people who are engaged with us a uh, what 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 they what they've been asking for. I think I think it's important to say as well, Richard, that obviously from a development point of view, the pathway doesn't change. No, exactly. Yeah. You know, our regional um responsibilities will, will be the same and something that we um take very seriously and i think you've only got to look at the makeup of our squad how many uh, boys are actually playing on a week-to-week -week basis that have come from um what yeah. is what is the region now so you know we're very proud of that as well and uh on them responsibilities and pathway will you know will not change yeah no it's well said and just one final one on that rebrand piece sticky we uh, had a question from a young supporter who was uh talking about that you know how enthused he is as a youngster who's only known cardiff blues but you know he's kind of loves that sports history and uh loves the heritage of this place but was just asking what we're going to do to kind of try and promote that to younger audiences yeah i mean we've got a you know a continuation of the programs that we we, we already have in place um, it, it's uh, l like I say, in, in, in terms of um, it, it's business as normal, really. Um, you know, it, it's whilst it's a, uh, it, it can be perceived as a, a, a significant change, and it, it's yeah, we, we've dropped the suffix and replaced it with Cardiff uh, Rugby. Uh, so I, I think it's a um, we, we've always we, we've got lots of programs and of engagement with our with our young fans and they're our future and um, the demographic demographic of our supporters. Yeah, we, uh, you know, we 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 would like to uh, you know, in, encourage those youngsters and hope to be able to do that. So whether that's through our foundation, whether that's through the um, our, our marketing departments and our junior programs, um, we're uh, you know, we'll, we'll continue to do those and also uh, you know, whilst being proud of that heritage. 
Uh, and you know, I, when I saw the question, uh, it was absolutely brilliant that you've got a, a you know, a, a young fan who, um, you know, has, has got as much interest in that heritage piece as they have in the in in the modern day team, and that's uh, that's what it's all about. But I think that was also kind of um, obviously we weren't fully embracing that previously, but most people in South Wales certainly of my age, everyone supports a Premier League football team that isn't Cardiff City because they weren't up there in those days. But you all, you look at Liverpool fans, all their young supporters are very much aware of that heritage and all the great players. So it's just, you know, putting it front and centre. And if people want to digest it and we do it in different ways, then, um, yeah, that's great. Um, Di, coming yeah. back to rugby, um, as you'd expect, um, the main question for you coming in from lots of people is around recruitment and what our plans are um this season and you know how much you're going to recruit so on so on um now i know um budgets are tight and you know particularly with the impact of covid we're not going to be going out and signing yeah, no. a, a glut of players um but you know you do have some big plans in place to into you know build that gradual improvement in the squad so do you want to just discuss that a little bit and well yeah, I think obviously um, coming in on an interim basis uh, initially um, give both the club time to have a look at me and me to have a look at them pretty much. Um, and, you know, I've been really pleased and uh, encouraged by, uh, you know, the the vision of the, of, uh, the board and, and how they feel this has to be taken forward. It's been very realistic and you know and very thought out it's not knee-jerk reaction um uh, you know i'd love to to sort of sit here and, and make big claims that we're going to be winning the league next year and so on i think that would be a mistake to to say that although we'd love to do that i think we've very very much got a, a stage approach and that's not me trying to buy time i think when you get coaches sitting in your and, and saying, oh, listen, this is about a three-year plan. Uh, straight away, people start to think about, you know, this is just buying time. But I think, you know, the realistic, uh, you know, the realistic um, thought process is, you know, we haven't been higher than seventh in the last 10 years. Um, we are confident that we can move it forward. Um, we've just been through, you know, probably the biggest crisis that, the, the, you know that um, the, this, any sport has seen pretty much, so I think the board has to take a lot of plaudits for keeping the squad together. I think you know that's that's an important thing to say pretty much. Uh, retention, you know, we haven't lost anybody, and I think that's a that's a huge achievement in in this period. And, and the plans are not to lose anybody. Realistically, you know, we're not going out there to recruit uh, many uh, many signing many more signings. Um, it, it may be one or two, but certainly not going to be five or six. But and I don't think that's something that people can chuck stones at us for because I think uh, uh, most teams will be in exactly the same position. To me, the first thing that I, you know, obviously sat down uh, with the board was that the important thing to me is to make sure we retain our best players. Um, and, you know, the board has done a great job in retaining our best players. What people tend to forget is we've got a youngish squad uh, and to retain players when they're picking up more experiences, more game time and so on. Nobody ever signs for pay cuts. So the reality is them contracts will always get bigger and bigger. So then it becomes harder and harder to retain the quality we've got. So from my, you know, my end, we've definitely got a lot of quality within the squad. Really pleased that we're retaining every, you know, everybody in that squad. It's my job now to get more out of the squad. I'm confident that we can do that. I'm confident that we can um, get at least another 10%, 15% out of this squad. That's with the attention to detail we need to put in right across the board, um, you know, the, with the conditioning, with the way the players look after themselves, the way we train. I think that's that's the important thing is, to me, it's all about the training. If you get training right, that'll have a knock-on effect. So, you know, I'm going to come in and I'll hopefully look at raising standards, raising expectations of what I want individually and collectively for not only the players, but from the staff. I believe that will initially have a 10% type of improvement. That 10% will get us where... Stage one of us moving forward, you know, it is pretty much is 
you know, getting into that top six on a regular basis, that's when I feel our minimum target has got to be, certainly for the next year, uh, you know, year or so, as in us qualifying for the Champions Cup on a year-to-year basis. Then, obviously, when we're doing that, then we can think about the next stage and the next stage is get to the top four. So it's one step at a time. Really pleased that, you know, we we have retained. We've only got Thomas Williams uh, to do. We're confident that we that we'll get that done. So I think well done to the board. They've kept everybody on board in really difficult times. My job now is to get a bit more out of this squad. I took the job on the basis I knew this was a squad, and I'm confident we can get a bit more out. F- target one is to be a Champions Cup team season on season, um, and then obviously it progress from there. Yeah, and just in terms of. Uh, getting the best out of this squad. We saw on the weekend you um, trying some players in some you know less familiar positions to them. I, you know, a couple of guys. Um, I think it was Craig Coleman and Neil Trigger yeah. have been talking about um, James Ratty and uh, Ben Thomas in particular and how well they thought they went. But yeah. um, you know that, that's another way you'll you. Yeah, you I Ratty, think I, I think if you look at um, I know people don't like to to use stats, but it's perhaps easier to explain with stats. I think. Um, when we've got all our, you know, well, all our players playing, you know, we went in something like fifty-four percent. We need to get that up to to sixty percent to to be comfortably in the top six and start knocking the door on the the top four, pretty much. Without our internationals playing, we're down to like 40 percent. So we, we clearly got to improve that game, um, you know, that that stat pretty much. Next year, you know, with a pro sixteen, uh, although we haven't quite got. You know, we only got in draft and we haven't got, got confirmation. There'll be less games without, um, you know, less overlap. So we won't, we'll miss our internationals less next year than we will have this year. But we can't rely on that. So we need to get more out of them players. So if we keep on doing the same thing, you know, that we've done, if we keep on playing the same players that we've done, the likelihood of us getting a hugely different result is, is you know, is uh, is not big. So we've got to look at developing players. We've got to look at uh, growing the squad, growing um, the squad, you know, trying players in different positions. Now, we look at Ratty, who's one of our best ca- ball carriers. Everyone tells me we, we're crying out for a, you know, for a world-class eight, pretty much. I think that's... that's Seems to be them, you know. Obviously, Sam Sam Moore is nearly fit now, so hopefully he can get some um, some game time under his belt. Because you know, as I said, you know, there's, there's uh, big um, you know big plans for him. Um, hopefully, we can keep him on the field. Right, he's one of our best ball carriers. You got Ben Thomas, who I think is, is is an excellent rugby player, but with you know um, Reese Preston, which is another fantastic signing, uh, and Jared Evans on board next season. You know, um, Ben can play 10, we can play 12, we know that. Then you got Willis and Max, who had another great performance yeah. on the weekend. Ben playing at 15. You know, what we want to do is get all our best players on the field. It's not a case of messing them about, because that's what they think you're messing them You're not messing them about, you're developing these players and you're growing the squad. So when internationals are away, we can put a squad, we can put a team out on the field that can obviously keep on picking up points and, and picking up wins. So I'm confident in a lot of these players, but we have to look at developing uh, areas in our game which will give us that improvement. Yeah, it's actually a question just now that yeah. came in. Not uh, here it is. No, that's not the right one. Here we are. No, that is it. So it's from Charlie Hunt who was asking about mm. Reese Priestland. And when you consider, you know, Jared, your Ben Thomases, Max Lowen, and all these young guys, and I think it's probably fair to say our back line isn't the most kind of vocal. You know, there's not really any vocal leaders there. Yeah. To, but someone like Priestland is going to have a huge impact on the likes of those boys. Yeah, that's one thing that did jump out. You know, you can't deny uh, uh, some of the talent that we've got. And I still think a lot of that talent is, is you know, on the upward curve. But they are still quite young, and you know um, we haven't got too many leaders within the group. So uh, I think if you look at a lot of the games, certainly some of the games that I've uh, been involved in, you cannot doubt the effort and the commitment, which I've been really impressed with. The boys go out there and, and die for the shirt, which which is a given. Any team I want to be involved in that, you know, I don't tap people on the back for that. That's something that you respect. Go out and you know and give everything for the jersey, um, but. We've lost games through, 
uh, poor game management and game understanding. And that's when you need your role models and your senior players to step up and to help develop these players. Obviously, from a coaching side, we'll try and do that, but we're not on the field. So when them players are involved in training, we try and put them in them scenarios in training, you know, that they learn from them. We, you know, we review games that, that have gone against us, like Connacht was the same, Munster was the same. We were right in them game to the last 15 to 20 minutes. And they just knew how to win games better than we did. And that's a learning process. So, you know, people like Reese Preston can can help that. You know, Cole Hill coming on board last season has helped that up front and so on. Um, Ellis coming back, we all know you know, he's a quality leader. So there is leaders within that group, but you know, we can develop uh, leaders and game understanding and Reese Reese's, you know, as experience as you're gonna get pretty much from from any back out there. Brilliant. So you, you mentioned um Champions Cup qualification is the target. Obviously that's um unknown at the moment, Dicky, um what what the future kind of holds for European competitions. What what's the latest on that? I know we got a couple of questions. Robin Richie asking the same. Um, what, what what is the latest on that European situation? Yeah, so we're working um, in collaboration with the Welsh Rugby Union, uh, Alan and I, um, and uh, we 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 haven't got a definitive answer yet. Um, but as far as we're concerned, uh, it's uh, if it's if it's eighteen teams, then uh, you know, the top three from each conference qualify, which would miss out. If it's 24 teams at the top four qualify, and we're uh, we're in as far as we're concerned, so we're um, we're on the same page uh, as the Welsh Rugby Union, uh, and hopefully we'll have some news in the uh, in the next week or so. But uh, we're uh, we, we we know our position, and uh, and 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 hope that that that, uh, that that you know it uh, falls in our favour. So uh, as Di said, we we want to be playing Champions Cup rugby, and and I can show everybody on the call we're. Uh, we won't be giving away our position. It's uh, it, it's just not going to happen. You're uh, uh, you can be rest assured we're uh, we're fighting for that, and and, and we're uh, we're 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 confident uh, of our position, and um, we'll we'll inform everybody as soon as we know uh, anything. But um, I must stress that uh, the 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 WRU are, uh, are, are squarely aligned with us, supportive of uh, of our position, and uh, that's a a massive help as well. Yeah, I think um, a lot of the questions for you tonight, Dickie, is, as you can imagine, uh, around that WIU piece, uh, the finance and uh, CVC money and whatnot, which you obviously spoke about um, recently in the media anyway. What, what's the kind of, what are, what are the developments on that and, you know, how's, um, how have they reacted to that? And if you had kind of conversations with them since around those points that you made? Yeah, I haven't. Uh, I, I, Alan's uh, had a, a couple of conversations. Uh, I, I understand, um, and um, I'm led to believe I saw something earlier that there was a potential uh, conversation between uh, uh, Steve Phillips and the media today. So maybe there'll be some answers flowing from that. Um, you know, my position doesn't doesn't change, as, and it's a personal opinion um, in terms of. Uh, the, the 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 funding coming in and the and the requirement of the regions and and especially given the uh, the financial position we find ourselves in uh, you know, my 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 position remains constant with that regard yeah it's linked also to the you know to the loans you know I, I you know firmly believe there are you know, the the pain should be shared and uh, and and again that hasn't changed but in terms of the CVC money um, you know it's a tricky one because if you if you apply the rules of the uh, you know, the PRA and which flows into the regional distribution model, you know, the capital receipts, um, the union are within their rights to say, well, the capital receipts, we're uh, we're going to invest our money as we as we as as we wish. Um, every CEO, I guess, would would, would invest that differently. Um, uh, the uh, the 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 investment strategy that's being deployed is is one where it's a, it's a long term play where the investments made the the the, the profits are, are driven out and those profits would obviously drop into the to the PRA and the regional distribution model. It's um you know, my concern with that is I think you probably need that that's fine in normal trading uh, times. But given the crisis that we're faced with and, and the, the the immediate nature of the problem, uh, I think there's a, a, a hybrid of, of a solution that could be found that, uh, that that gets us over the 
the, the initial problems to, to then focus on the longer term. Um, it was one of my colleagues on, on, on the board who, who said these sort of monies are, uh, sh should be there for a rainy day. And it's absolutely tipping down. <laughs> so it's uh, you, if you take that analogy, you um, you know it, it's it's a it's a very uh, it's a fair it's a fair analogy to make. It's um, it is tipping down outside. You know, Dai's alluded to the to the COVID crisis. You uh, it's uh, a, a significant uh, period in uh, economic terms and only uh probably worse than uh, the the world wars and that needs uh you know a different outlook on things and it's not normal trading times but there you go that's my opinion and uh like i say i'll i'm uh, uh it's uh that's probably that's it oh. mike from uh, on with that <laughs> uh okay coming back to rugby and uh probably a much more Positive story. Um, we've seen Alice Jenkins come back in the last couple of months, die and yep. put in some brilliant um, performances. You are club captain previously. Um, ben Fudge is asking, will you be the club captain moving forward? Which I think is slightly unfair to ask you on the spot. But, I don't uh, mind answering it. I think in terms um, of leadership generally, you know, what yeah, do you look I, for? I, obviously, he portrays uh, all the qualities you'd look for in a club captain, and he's done it, and he's done an excellent job in that. You know that that would obviously be a decision for a little bit later down the road. But um, when Ellis has come back, I haven't made him captain because I, I felt after I mean uh, two seasons out, and you know all the the work he's done to get back from that injury. I think you know what Ellis Jenkins needed to concentrate on was Ellis Jenkins, and I wanted to take that little bit of pressure off him. Like I remember in his first session straight away, you know, when he came back, he took the responsibility straight away of addressing some issues in training that needed to be addressed. No, you won't stop the guy doing that because he's passionate about what he wants to do and he wants the best for the team and the club, which is which is fantastic. But I have a responsibility to look after him and do the best for him as well. So next year will be next year. We'll talk about that obviously a little bit. He, he portrays all the characteristics, but to me you know, him coming back in, and I think people expect him just to pick up the captaincy. I thought that was unfair, I mean, two years out, and, you know, I just wanted him to go back, go back out and play and, you know, look after Ellis Jenkins first and foremost and go out and get a smile on his face. And, you know, he's gone out and put a couple of games together. He's picked up a, a few little niggles, you know, which is understandable, uh, understandable but... Um, you know he's uh, he's a quality man and he's a quality professional. So you know there's no there's no doubt, and he's certainly be in that mix for you know for that job next season. Great stuff. And uh, another question that was sent in ahead of um, ahead of tonight: uh, How difficult is it to manage uh, a Pro 14 league campaign when your best players are missing you know through international commitments so often? Uh, obviously, it's not easy to manage, but it'd be an excuse to say that you don't know about it. So, you know, that goes back to what we were saying earlier about, you know, people, it's easy to say that you're playing people out of position, but to me, it's not playing people out of position. It's about trying to develop them that they can play in different positions. And you need to have that flexibility and you need to have that ability, certainly when you're, you're, you're internationals in a way. The difficulty is it could be five, but it could be 11. You don't quite know how many it's going to be, pretty much. So um, that's a difficulty, but you know, you've got to put some planning into it, you know, you know, I've planned for the worst case scenario, as I've been 12, 13 away, uh, everything else is, is is pretty much a bonus when it comes to the team that we would have, but make no bones about it, you wouldn't have me more than if we had 20 in that squad, because that's, you know, that's that's my job, my job is, is, is to, to get the best out of this team and to move us forward, but to produce as many internationals as possible as well. So that's a twofold thing. We can be successful on the field, which will have a knock on the uh, knock knock on aspect. I mean, we deliver more internationals, which we would put more pressure. But that's the type of pressure that we're looking for. So it, it's difficult, but you know what's going to come. So you've just got to plan for it. Yeah, you mentioned there you want as many internationals as possible. Um, this time next week, evening ahead of the Lions announcements. I think we've probably got three players that are being touted to potentially be included. Josh Adams, Josh Navidi, and Thomas Williams. So the one the names that keep yeah. cropping up. Um, 
I'm sure you'd love to see them involved and they've got all the attributes to kind of be there. Yeah, well, I'm the wrong person to ask because I can't pretend that to be anything barbarous. Obviously, you know, for me, they, you know, I'd be voting with two hands for the, for the three of them to go, and what a fantastic, ex, you know, experience it would be for 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 the three of them. And I'd be hugely disappointed if if they didn't go, pretty much. And on the back of that as well, you know, hopefully some of uh, some of our guys, you know, would be involved in in the Welsh tour as well. So you know, hopefully. That it won't be too many here in pre-season training. Hopefully, there'll be, be a way either on the Lions or, or for Wales. Yeah. yeah, and you weren't involved. Uh, sorry, it wasn't too long ago that you were involved in the Lions series over in South Africa. Yeah, uh, how, how tough is it going to be this time around when you consider COVID or the various challenges? You know, the fact that the boys are going to, you know, by reports, be in a bubble for yeah. six weeks and not able to go out. Well. It, obviously, they'll have enough challenges on the field. You know, I think yeah. that's. Um, I think that you know they. I think you only got to look at them in the World Cup, pretty much. You know, they've got. They could probably put three or four teams out that are not much different in quality. Hugely physical up front. Although I think the Lions uh, have got the physicality to match that. You know, with some real quality behind. So, you know, they'd be really interesting uh, test series. You know, I think I think the Lions can go out there and win. But yet again, I, I, I'm biased. I've got my Lions hat on there. But um, I think it would be really tough as well. I think, um, being on, you know, being on, on them two as myself, it's, it, it, it was challenging on the field, but at least we could obviously go up and have a walk and go for the coffee and, and pray. They're not going to be able to do that. So I think the challenge for the management is will be try and keep uh, the guys active and, and you know and try and keep them not not a case of keeping them entertained because they're not there to be entertained. But you know it's not great. Think, you know thinking you can't go to the hotel and and potentially it's to train him back to the hotel. Yeah. So it's not going to be easy for them. But you know that's the challenge. But you know I'm sure they'll they'll step up to the challenge on the field. And the management have got some thinking to do to try and keep it right off the field for them. Yeah, uh, Richard, talking of um, the best of the British and Irish, I'm sure you've seen on the side there a few questions come in around. You know, have there been any recent talks around you know a British and Irish uh, league or anything like that? And I know um, you know we are, we are very much aware of what supporters uh, would ideally like. I mean, we get these kind of emails tweets you know, on, on a weekly basis so we're very much aware of where supporters preferences lie but obviously that that isn't on the table at the moment but uh what's the kind of current situation and could you see that potentially be in the case in the future you see johnny lewis here asking for uh, a rebel season two which i think you were probably I was a part coaching of or playing um, <laughs> no, no comment on that no comment um, no <laughs> It's certainly involved in it. That was it was a great time. Pretty much, we enjoyed playing against the, um, you know, the uh, the English teams. But to be honest, nobody enjoys being a rebel. Nobody enjoys yeah. being out of the loop. And I remember, um, obviously losing to, to the Scarlets in, in in the cup, you know, in, in the cup in that year. And I think the whole of Wales enjoyed um, both ourselves can't, um, and Swansea at the time not really achieving things in that so yes it was a good good period but nobody wants to be the rebel I think nobody wants to be outside of the of the tent yeah. we all need to you know we all need to be in the same boat rowing in the same direction really yeah Richard is there and you know do you see any any future for the, for that uh, not in the short term, Mike. If uh, if the truth be known, uh, everyone's uh, aware that it's uh, you know, and, and me included. I'd uh, yeah, I'd love to see it, and I think there are lots of people in Welsh rugby that have uh, you know, gone on record to say say the same. The but the reality is, um, you know, discussions aren't aren't taking place at the moment. But that's not to say that in the future the, they won't. And it's uh, um, you know, we've got CVC, or obviously. Um, got their uh, investments across, you know, the the Premiership, no, Pro 14, uh, Six Nations, etc. And and so, who's to say that in X number of years' time it doesn't get looked at? But it's not on the table at the moment. I'd be disingenuous to say that it was. Um, and in terms of just picking up the Rebel season, uh, it's uh, you know, World Rugby Regs and, uh, and etc. and cross border competitions. You know, the 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 days of being able to go rebel are, are uh, you know are, are behind us. It would be it's it's, it's something that um, yeah just wouldn't be uh, wouldn't be something that we'd be exploring. But as Di said, um, I think uh, yeah 
it'd be too tough to actually uh, achieve it. And uh, anyway, but listen, we'll uh, you know the uh, see, see what the future holds. It's hopefully we'll if we can if we get into the Champions Cup and we can p- pull a you know one or two bigger big English teams and we can bring them to the Arms Park and get stuck into them. And it, it's you know hopefully that will give something for the supporters to uh, uh, to replace the, the. But we know that. Everybody uh, ultimately wants the the British and Irish league, and we'll we'll keep banging the drum around the boardroom table uh, on on all of yours behalf, um, and, uh, and and so don't write off completely. But let's see what the future holds. Yeah, I see a few people here have been asking about Sam Moore. So just to pick up something Di mentioned previously, um, Sam, we got him back on the pitch, picked up uh, another knee injury, not as anywhere near as severe as the original yeah. one. Um, Back in full training. Yeah, back, back in full training. Now you know you, you got a feel for for the kid pretty much. As, as you said, he um, picked up a nasty knee injury that kept him up for a while. Uh, then came worked his socks off to get back, uh, and and then um, picked up uh, you know, more of an, uh, a knee sort of collision injury rather than like than any ligaments or any yeah. tendon damage. It was a collision injury which. Meant that they obviously have a little bit of time to settle down. He's been back in full training now for two weeks, so um, hopefully, you know, hopefully he'll be involved against the Dragons. And um, he's worked hard, and I think we're all pretty eager to to see him out in, on the pitch and hopefully fulfilling some of the potential that we all, you know, believe he has. Yeah, and um, one of the other questions came in ahead of um, yeah. ahead of this was, what, what did you learn from the Rainbow Cup? We've kind of already touched on that and i can see here yeah. where is the one gareth all stop was yeah. calling uh the decision to play ratty at eight was a, a master stroke so apart from what we've already discussed of you know playing those guys in new positions which you were very pleased with you know what, what else did you learn from that first game in the rainbow cup i i think you know a lot of a lot of the guys you know obviously i haven't played a lot of rugby so i think um you know we had an honest uh, very honest debrief today and a lot of them uh put their hands up and, and and felt that because they haven't had much game time, they really struggled from a conditioning point of view. When you can do as much conditioning as you like, but a lot of them hadn't uh, played. You know, uh, some of the areas which we need to get better on, I, I think I liked it, and it'd be wrong uh, of me to, to probably I liked a, a few things, especially with maybe Dean Rams uh, looking at it, and he'll work on, <laughs> work on them for the next couple of weeks. So, you know, there's areas there that we definitely need to, to work on and need to get better. But, you know, the big thing for me was some of the younger guys I was really pleased with. Uh, and, you know, some of the guys that, as you said, somebody like James Ratney, you know, he's put a lot of time into looking, you know, if you want to, you know, what are we looking for in an eight? You know, he fulfills that profile. And I thought he did really well. That's not saying he's going to make that change uh, immediately. But I think the difference between that is Ratney's probably been training for the, for the second no slot and then we play him at eight with his you know with his um um obviously approval you know sat him down explained what i was looking for you know with himself with ben at uh, 15 as well you know so there's, there's a couple of guys with, with laney at, at 13 you just got to try and grow the squad and then you know make sure that we got these players that can step in when the others mean but you know, the, these guys want to achieve things. The guys want to do better, and they're, they're more than happy to to put their hand up. So, obviously, you never want to lose, and, and I never go into games thinking, "Well, is it all right if we lose?" Because that is never the mantle. But you know, there was some negatives in there, and there was some uh, areas that we thought may have been better, but wasn't. But um, but that's for us to, to work on. But it was lots of positives coming out of it as well for me. Yeah. And one of the questions we had sent in, Dickie, was, um, you know, did we receive any payments uh, to, you know, extra funding to take um, part in the Rainbow Cup? I, I think that's already in the public domain, isn't it, that each kind of team was kind of allocated an extra figure of money? Um, oh, it's all linked to the, um, to, to the pro... Uh, which originally in- incorporated the the cheaters and the kings. So yeah, th- there there was a um, without wanting to go into too much detail, but th- there was a uh, an agreement with the South Africans to participate in that, and clearly they haven't participated through the first sixteen rounds. And then it, the 
conversations took place with the the, the four new new teams to come on board. Um, and obviously that's uh, gone down a different route due to COVID, which is out of everybody's control. So it, it, it's, it's, it's probably better to put that it's a case of, um, you know, holding on to, to income that was that was earmarked originally and not losing that as opposed to receiving any new money. Um, so, and, and, and there are big sums involved. So it's in everyone's best interest to, to, to keep um, to, to keep parties happy. Uh, so, so yeah, the it's it's is there any additional funding? Um, uh, no. Is there protection of of current? Yes. And does it ultimately bring uh, a, uh, a, 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 a the Pro 16 to the table um, further down the line for next season? Um, well, that that's uh, in in final stages of concluding as well. So it's uh, it's in everyone's best interest to look after the parties and. People also just need to, you know, need to. Remember we've we've come through a pretty significant pandemic where, where people, we're 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 making decisions with without any, uh, any, any hindsight of being, being through a period. The South Africans were in; they're not in. They're they're able to travel. They can't travel. They might be based here. We can base them there. And and the goalposts have been moving literally daily and weekly. So it's uh is trying to coordinate things for the to to, to enable the product to be uh, on the uh, on on the TV screens and for the for the supporters and the public, which is hugely important, and for and to keep all the pros and coaches and and these big organisations um, operating. So it, it's a it's 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 not perfect, but it's as good a it's it's a good a position as I think as we can uh, we can find. That's great. And we've pretty much gone through all, you know, most of the topics, at least that were kind of sent in asking us to discuss, but just to go through a, a few of the live ones quickly, this would be a, a quick one for you, hopefully, Di. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's really, yeah. Wh which retired player, Cardiff player, would you love to bring back to the current squad? So whether that's someone you played with or someone from your first stint, who, who you know, what player would you like to have here today? I... <laughs> As I said, it's about um, it's, it's a difficult question to ask, you know, because at different stages you'd require different different yeah. players. But I think, um, you know, the the vibe that I get from more supporters when I talk to uh, supporters is, you know, that, that we need this eight, we need this eight that's obviously going to take us forward. So you can't look past somebody like Rushy the, the impact that, yeah. he, that he had. But you know, I'm. You know, obviously, my job is to, to get Sam Moore on the field and, and get the best out of him. You know, uh, JT never lets us down in that area, and although he sees himself as more of a six than, than an eight, and you know, Ratty could be could be an option as well. But you know, I think just the vibe I get off the supporters that's yeah. the one area that supporters always point. We know that you know, in in real sort of business end of the season, um, in real tight games. You know, it's it's the games is one up front, so there's no it's no different now than it's ever you know that has been. So, you know, if we were going to boost it, it would be up front, and you know, probably eight is is a standout one that I think most people would recognise. So, if uh, a young Xavier Rush walked through the door, yeah. I think we would all be jumping up and down. Uh, the next question that came in for you there, Di, was uh, what impact will um, Tristan Bevan, which we announced coming in yesterday, yeah. what impact will he have? And you know, perhaps be good to, this opportunity also to discuss. Yeah. Um, Matt Sherratt, which we um, announced last yeah. week. So, yeah, you know, what impact would Jockey have, and what impact will Tristan Bevan have? Well, if you look at Jockey, obviously, um, you know, I, I was disappointed um, that you know Dwayne wasn't uh, uh, wasn't coming, and I think we were all disappointed in that. But he, he had his own reasons uh, for that, obviously, and we understand it. He, you know, when the emotional attachment I had to the blue is he, he'd have with the scarlet. So, you know, you know, we understood that, although it was, it was disappointing because I'd like to work with him. Um, it was imperative, you know, for me really that we got an experienced attack coach um, on board, spoke to, to some of the players, um, you know, on um, experience that they've had, not only in, in here, but in the well setup and, um, and you know, obviously speaking to to agents who you know were out there, obviously with people available, it came very evident to me that, that there was a strong belief that that jockey Matt would be the guy if we could you know if we could get him back. Everybody uh, felt that 
you know, he was the best that we've had here. And people outside this environment, you know, because he's obviously been on Welsh tours, uh, obviously in, in Worcester as well, you know, doing a decent job there. Um, so, you know, it, it was a real big... A uh, big appointment for us, really. And Matt, I think he's already gone on record. In this, he enjoyed working here more than he's enjoyed working any, anywhere else. Um, you know, that's the vibe. He felt he had a real connection uh, with the club and the supporters and the players. And he's really looking forward to getting on uh, board because we you know without a doubt we've got an attacking, uh, we've got an attacking mindset, and that's the way I want to play the game as well. I know I'm a tired old prop, but. That's that's how I want to play the game, and we have got the talent behind. So I think Jockey is somebody that can can unlock that attacking the talent with, with some of his innovation and some of his structures and so on. And so you know that's what I think he'll bring as well. Um, Tristan, you know, as I've said earlier, it's about getting the training right. It's about making sure that uh, our conditioning is right. It's about looking at you know, we compile all the stats that come in from the rugby stats performance point of view you know uh, um, what happens in the game uh, where do we get the ball from how many times do we get the ball from that area what do we do with it then you combine that with some of the the conditioning stats to pretty much because um, we work on then getting training right so that reflects in the game so you want the you want to train the way you play so you don't want players in game situations where they haven't been in training or they haven't experienced in training he manage player loads, as in people are not doing too much or too, too little. He helped me uh, with the professionalism around the alignment of the organisation, making sure that we're all aligned and we're all on the, the same page. And, you know, he's, he puts a hell of a lot of work into uh, stuff that the one percenters, you know, the one percenters that will make a difference, but, you know, to helping us move forward pretty much. And I suppose it helps. He's worked me in the past. He knows what I'm looking for. And he knows, um, you know, what, what is acceptable to me and not acceptable uh, for me as well. So, you know, uh, he knows some of the staff as well. And they all, you know, rate him as one of the best in the business, certainly for what we're looking at him to do. So there's two appointments, I believe, there that, that are massive to, you know, to, to help me move move the club forward. Great. And Richard, one for you, which is about um, improvements at Cardiff Arms Park. Now, obviously... Um, we have the the lease situation at the moment uh, kind of close to running out. So, you know, it's not really prudent to pile a load of money into a stadium where you don't have a long-term future secured. But you, what, what is the latest there? Yeah, well, as you alluded to, Mike, we're, uh, we, we've only got till, uh, you know, sort of beginning of next year to where, where the lease gets terminated. So, um, you yeah, know, unfortunately, we're... we're, we're uh, we're in a position where we're we're in communication with Cardiff Athletic Club to to see where where, where that might take, and we've we've obviously got options available to us um, that that, that uh, we're we're deploying, um, but uh, it's probably best to keep those uh, private at this stage. But we're doing uh, um, everything that that we we can to uh, to secure the the the, the future for both. Uh, Cardiff rugby uh, seniors and rags to uh, moving forward. It's uh, unfortunate it's come down to the the final furlong using a ho horse racing terminology. It should never have really, but um, it is where we are, and we're uh, um, you know, our, our board are, uh, are are on top of things to to make sure that we can uh, we can stay at Cardiff Farms Park. So it's um it's it's a live uh, it's a live conversation and. Um, uh, legal teams are, are looking at it, and and we are uh, um, we can go from there. But uh, picking up your point in terms of investment into the ground for for the reason we, we, we'll always maintain it, always have done to a to a level that is in, ensuring that the we we can open and do and, and and have supporters there in as best an environment as we can get it, given the the budgets that we've got available to us. But it's a yeah, it's pretty. Uh, it's pretty sad, uh, you know, position that we find ourselves in. Really, that we haven't got an agreement for, uh, for, for as it's currently named, Cardiff Blues and the RFC. It's, uh, um, it shouldn't be like this, really. Yeah, we'll finish with um, one last question for Di from yep. Steve Coombs um, from from the CF10 Trust, Dicky. And I know you wanted to, um, to pass your thanks to um, David Allen from the Trust as well. So perhaps we finish with. 
question from Steve if you just wanted to kind of uh, say say what you had in mind um, for David. Yeah, yeah, just to uh, thank him really. Uh, obviously, he's been instrumental in in, in where where they found themselves uh, uh, today. Um, obviously, he's uh, been taken uh, his role has been taken on by by Lynn uh, Glazer, who, who's doing a sterling job. But um, you know, I I thoroughly enjoyed my my, my uh, connections with with David. He, uh, he he challenged me, challenged the organisation on behalf of the supporters. Um, he, uh, he he's still going to be, I'm sure, influential as a as a member and supporter. Um, but it'd be remiss of me not to thank him for his uh, um, for for his time at the helm of of the trust. And um, I'll, I'll miss him. But uh, um, and and our our monthly monthly meetings, but uh, they're in uh, good shape. And I think there was a question that came in prior to the um, um, pr prior to the call about how supporters can um, can have their voices heard, and that, that, that that's a, a very good way of doing it is uh, being part of the the trust. And we've got a meeting next week with uh, a couple of our board members and Lynn and uh, and, and and Hugh to. To talk about that sort of supporter representation piece again, um, as a uh, we always said that the primary uh, or, or the initial objective was to, to to sort out the the structure of, of of the main board, and 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 that's now in a in good shape. So I'm looking forward to that conversation where where we'll lead, and if it, if it does bear fruit, and and uh, that, that uh, decisions are taken to to to, to look at that involvement. Yeah, that would largely be down to David and the work he put in. So, for me personally, on, on behalf of our board and, and Cardiff Blues, a massive thank you to him. And yeah, just um, to finish, then um, the question from Steve, who's part of that CF10 trust. Um, Di, if you were an academy player coming in in today's day and age, what would be the big difference between now and then uh, as folks are coming through to your days? I think Steve says Aberman, it was Aberdeer, wasn't it, youth? Abraham and others, yeah, Abraham, it's yeah. Abadeh now. I think, I, I think it's obviously uh, a little bit different, but you know, certainly, probably up until you're 16, things don't change. I think the community game is where it all starts, and um, no better club really than than, than Abraham. And you know, I think they've always had a proud um, mini section there. We've all, you know, from the age of five or six gone out there and enjoyed playing rugby. So I think that's. Uh, and you know they are one of you know hundreds of clubs right across Wales where it starts for all our international. So you know, I think that doesn't change pretty much. And you know we all enjoy rugby playing with our playing with our mates and uh, um, you know winning some, losing some, but you know getting taught along the way about how important sport is and the values that brings pretty much. And then then pretty much it's a little bit different now when you get to sixteen and, and obviously you pick up the regional. Um, sort of uh, sides pretty much so things get a little bit um, a little bit more serious and they go into academies and so on which wasn't the case you know when when I was younger um, so things probably are a little bit more professional from 16 on um, you know them but you can't take away how important them youth sides were and you know the the learning that you did you know uh, within that setup and it's something that I, you know, owe very dear, and it's something that I, you know, in my career owe, owe so much to the, you know, the, the hard work of the volunteers. So that's what they are at the end of the day, you know, volunteers. And I remember my old youth coaches in Morton Jones and Phil Reese. They taught me, you know, the, the good cop, bad cop scenario. Morton was, uh, you know, full of passion, and then you know Phil was more quite, uh, quietly spoken type of thing. So, but it got the message is across really well. So you learn things from all the coaches that you, that you play in there. But the important thing is you still got to enjoy it. I think that, you know, that's the advice I would give to, uh, you know, to, to any kid, uh, you know, coming through, whether you're playing for the blues, the Ospreys, Dragon, Scarlet, doesn't really matter when you picked up there. The important thing is we start playing rugby because we want to play rugby because we enjoy it. If we're lucky enough to get a, a profession out of it, happy days. But, you know, you play through enjoyment. So the important thing is to, you know, is to play with a smile on your face. And if you're lucky enough to pick uh, be a professional rugby player, you know, happy days and enjoy it because it doesn't last long. It's It's gone in the blink of an eye. But 
don't forget why you started playing the game. Yeah. And so just to finally finish, we have a disgruntled John Mahoney here who is talking about, uh, I think he was asking for investments in the front five and uh, that we've ignored it. And that kind of answers his question. But I think, Di, you'd probably argue that, um, you know, people like Corey Hill, you know, we've got a, a good core of front five players that we perhaps haven't seen a huge amount of this year due to the, the nature of the season and the extra international rugby has been structure of the season next year we'll have those international boys hopefully far more than we have this year and you know when you look at the tight heads we've got huge strength you've got christian dace who's you know got yeah, injuries I, I, th- I, now, think, I think we've got we've got talent there um you know and we need to get more out of them i think we need to have them available for whatever reasons whether that's injury international call up but I do think there are investments there. Corey's only been here a season, I think, hasn't he? So there has been investment there. Of course, you could always look at more investment, you know, but that doesn't necessarily bring lots of success either. Then you'd get criti- criticised probably for not developing your own and, and blocking you know, the pathway. But I think if you can see some of the development coming through, Liam Belcher, I think, you know, Christian Dix has been here for a while, hasn't he? And, you know, you've got Liam Belcher coming coming. Uh, Coming through as well and, and starting to put his hand up and show what a quality player they are. Corey Dom on the loose head front and Rhys Carley, you know, there's the two quality loose head. You know, we all know Dylan's just getting better this season on season. You know, Seb has got all the potential to be, you know, to be world class. You know, we, we need consistency in, in how we play the game. So we have got, you know, we have got players there we can develop and, and bring through. That's a part of, of my job. Um you talk to any coach, any coach would like to invest in every area. But as I said right at the start, I, th- I think the board need to be applauded for keeping hold of what we got, not chucking stones out of what we got or we haven't got. So that's certainly my mantle going into this season. Forget, forget what we haven't got, but work on what we have got and get the best out of them. And, you know, who knows what the future will bring, but we are not getting the best out of the squad yet. So to me is when we when we reach that ceiling, and then you know if it's an opportunity to to bring people in, you know that's what the board want to do as well. And we want to be committing, you know, you know, competing at the top table. Nobody wants that more than the board, but we've got to do it in a sensible way and a financial way that the club is secure as well. So it's got to be done sensibly. But you know, I think we're on the right path. We've got a three-year plan in place that we believe can can move us forward step by step. Yeah, that's excellent. Well, I think we should probably leave it there. We told the car park tenant we'd be here till late. It's <laughs> gone, gone very fast. So uh, we may be locked in. You may see us come back on in uh, five, ten minutes. But, yeah, we better make a dash for it, Di. But um, thank you very much for everyone joining thank us you, um, this evening. Like I said earlier, we'll have um, season memberships uh, information going out in the next couple of weeks. So please keep your eye out for that. And uh, hopefully we'll see you all at the Arms Park in the not too distant future. Yeah. Look forward to seeing everybody. Yeah. Great stuff. Thanks everyone.